Bonjour, ici Micheline Gould du Club de lecture Affaires. Aujourd'hui, j'ai avec moi un auteur américain qui écrit un ouvrage tout à fait intéressant qui s'appelle « The best place to work ». Cette personne, c'est M. Ron Friedman. Alors, sans plus tarder, je vais demander à M. Friedman de se présenter. On va commencer l'entrevue qui va être fort intéressante. Thank you so much, M. Ron Friedman, for joining us for a short chat on your wonderful book. Excellent. Before uh, we go ahead with the, con the, the other questions that we have, why don't you introduce yourself? Let, let people know who you are and what you do. Right. Excellent. Um, I actually heard about you through Mitch Joel. Uh, you had been on his podcast, uh, which I enjoy listening to on a regular basis. I thought you did a tremendous job because Mitch is a very hard interviewer. He has very, very difficult questions and you really, uh, you really nailed it. So one of the things that you mentioned during that interview was that, um, you know, businesses should have reading budgets. And, and I was so happy to hear someone like you mentioned that. I said, I absolutely got to learn more about this guy. Um, so I got a copy of your book I, uh, and I, uh, I read it and here we are. So I'm so happy uh, and thanks to Mitchell that I got to be in touch with you. Uh, now that your book has been out for almost a year, I wanted to know uh, how has it been working for you? How, how, what has been the reaction uh, from the business community to, you, to, your, um, to your work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but that must bring, uh, you know, stir up a, a few emotions uh, with business owners uh, who, who might say, well, no, 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 I have to be able to, as you mentioned, to, to be close to my employees, to know that they're there and that they're working. So how have they been reacting to, because you've got so many great ideas in how to change the workplace setting to improve productivity, but also happiness. Okay. 
right? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Or, or, or those who stay longer are not necessarily performing employees, employees who perform well. That's right. Um, you also mentioned uh, in the um, actually one of one of the revelations that I had in, in reading your book uh, was acknowledging uh, the role of psychology in a business setting. I was uh, totally amazed at the scope of this science, and you were so eloquent in in bringing to us so much research that can help businesses and um, are you seeing that businesses are starting to acknowledge this role of psychology in uh, the business environment? Mm -hmm. Excellent example. Anyways, that was one of the things that, you know, I, we don't read psychology books anymore if you've left the university setting, but I think that uh, your book enables us to discover the, the scope of, the, of that science. It was really great. Um, and you've mentioned this already about this quote that you have, that there's a massive divide between the latest science and the modern workplace. Um, You've mentioned that one of the goals in publishing this book was to create that link. Um, somehow this science, you know, you were a former university professor yourself, it, it just doesn't get noticed. And we, we don't reach out, uh, it doesn't reach the people it, it can help the most. Why is that in your mind? Why is that uh, happening? Mm.
And um, I think that you've done a great job and I wish many university professors would read your book because I have sort of like uh, personal missions. Uh, university, there's are many, many university pro professors who publish here. I'm sure it's the same in the States, but the books are simply not accessible. And it's a shame because the knowledge is so great. The knowledge is so interesting, but as you suggest, it's, it's not written to help people use it. And in that sense, I think that your book could serve as a great example of how research can be put in layman's term, but in an action-oriented um, writing that, that, and, that uh, in, in encourages people to use that knowledge. So uh, I hope it helps. I hope it helps. Now let's present your book. Okay, you've already mentioned a little bit what it's all about. Um, I know that, as you mentioned, that you had the idea because you were sort of a, a professor that got bored. But in, introduce the book to us. What is it this about and who did you write it for? And, and uh, the, the, all of that workplace environment discussion was so interesting. Like myself, for instance, I often like to go for a walk to be able to set my mind straight. If I want to write something or uh, develop a concept, I need to walk. What you're saying is that employers should allow employees to decide, maybe not the walk for everybody because I'm a freelancer, but still they can de choose the environment where they'll be the most productive. It could be including play, it could be, you know, where are you going to be the most creative and the most productive? Mm -hmm.
Absolutely. Um, one of the uh, content, uh, the, the, the areas that you've covered that I found very important is all of this notion of engagement or disengagement. You know, you mentioned that 80% of workers are disengaged. Um, why, why are we there? Why is this happening? Why, why is this such a sad state of affair? Those needs of the employees, competence, connectedness, and autonomy. That's where the books come in. Absolutely. Uh, you've divided the book in three sections, designing an extraordinary workplace experience, motivating excellence, and attracting and retaining top performers. So each section is uh, concludes with some really tangible ideas and those lessons, both for the managers and what you call the emerging leaders. What did you decide on this format? Because I think it's very interesting. So we can read the research, we can, you've put it into a sort of a, a story and you've sort of prepared a story so that we can grasp the idea of the research and then at, at the end of each section we've got these lessons these action items that we can work from and you've divided them for the managers and for the emerging leaders right Is that right? Oh.
That's right. X, that's a very good, very good advice. Um, so let's maybe go down to the three main lessons that you've uh, uh, detailed in your conclusion. Um, let's go at it one by one and then we conclude our interview. I don't want to spend too much of your time. The first one is psychological needs are at the heart of employee engagement. That's right. Second, organizations are more successful when they address the limits of the mind and body. Mm. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, same here. Absolutely. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. And then the last one, which is not the least, integrating work and family life improves the quality of both. That's true. Right. Mm -hmm. Being happy, having a fulfilling life uh, altogether. Uh, maybe one last question, because I do uh, uh, is is how because you know you work uh, you work with large companies, but this book can also help small businesses as well. I mean, we're not all working in environments with uh, 200 people in the same floor working in an open space. But uh, do you have any suggestions for the small businesses? Some of the tips that they can they can benefit from by reading this book. Mm 
Hmm. Great examples. Uh, your book is so filled with excellent things that people can apply so quickly uh, and without the, it costing them uh, tons and tons of, of money. Uh, one last uh, point is that doesn't relate to the book, but relates to what you did recently with the Peak Performance Summit. Uh, I, if you won't li like to mention it here, I think you're going to be re relaunching the Peak Performance Summit in the fall. Uh, would you like to say a few words on it? Excellent, very inspiring program. I can vouch for it. Let's conclude by thanking you for your time, congratulating you on a great book. Uh, how would you like people to get in touch with you? What is the best way to reach you? Super. Thank you so much. I wish you continued success. Uh, I hope you'll come up with other great books like this because you're very prolific. I get, you're a prolific reader, prolific, prolific writer. And uh, again, uh, congratulations. It was an excellent, excellent book to read. Take care. Bye.